Hi, welcome to my channel of Sparrows and Butterflies. If you're brand new here, my name is Emma and I am a homeschooling mom of two kiddos. My kids are going into eighth and sixth grade this year. So both getting up there. I don't have any more littles, which is kind of sad, but also kind of cool. Um, we are an eclectic homeschooling family, which just means that we use a little bit of every single style pretty much that's out there. So if there is a style, we probably do some sort of thing that falls in line with that. So if you want to see what we are planning on doing for our kids curriculums for their eighth grade and sixth grade, stick around. All right, so let's jump right in and take a look. I'm not going to show you how I'm going to piece all this together just yet. That'll be in another video, you, but for now, we're going to come over to these shelves and we're going to see just what we're using for our 2019-2020 school year. I can't really get a good view for you to be able to see everything all at once, but I did want to show you just how I have everything kind of organized on the shelves. So everything that we are for sure going to be using, I have split up into three different shelves. So there's this first shelf that you see, which is organized by math, English language arts, science, readers, uh, not readers, read alouds, um, uh, critical thinking, unit studies, German, and then down here we have, and then down here we have our history, our world history, our American history, books on history and government. This box I will show you in a moment, but it is just more stuff related to history. Then over here, we have our current affairs, our Bible or uh, character books, finances. Then, then on this third shelf here, we have all of our extras. So this section here is all books that I will be assigning my children to read. Most of them are fun books. There are a couple history related books in there and I might add a couple like sciencey books, but they are mostly just simple readers not really related to anything else but just to get them reading and then we are going to be listening to the swiss family robinson um together as a family then over here i just have a bucket of scissors all sorts of scissors and pens and some pencils but not many because they have their own pencils then i have this book of weapons of world war ii and I've got some other stuff here, some science books, um, flashcards for the First World War, and then a bunch of readers and a um, couple graphic novels. And I will go into what the what I'm how I'm using these in probably another video, but um, it'll just be extra stuff not really related to our curriculum. So let's jump right in to curriculum okay so I have two kids so this might look like there's kind of a lot of stuff here okay but we're not going to use every little thing all right so our core are these big fat notebooks the complete middle school study guide so they are the complete middle school study guide everything you need to ace math in one big fat notebook and then there is the English language arts one. Then there is a science one. And then there is the world history and American history. So they're all set up basically the same way, but just for different subjects. And this is what I'm using as our core. So these are what I'm using as our core books. Um, they are not workbooks. And I will give you a quick uh, look through them in just a minute here. But I will say that I will do a video probably in a few weeks that will show a more in-depth look at them. But they are going to be our core and we're going to build off of those. So for math, 
Um, we will also be pulling pages that we from the fifth grade and the sixth grade uh, master books. Uh, living math for a living education. These are books that we just didn't ever finish. And um, as we're going through the different math concepts in here, I will just pull out a work page or two from these books and have them do that. And then anything that I don't have a work page in these four that we cover in here, I will probably have in my other resources or I will print them. Um, the other ones that I'm using are this is not a math book. And then my son, for some fun, will just do this Adventures in Multiplication and Division. It's math for Minecrafters. And then we're also going to be doing, we did this before, and we're going to do it again, um, a drive through menu math, just for a fun way to get some practical math in. And then on top of this, so this is all like overview, reviewing, seeing what concepts we haven't looked through or what concepts we need extra practice on. And then once we have actually finished going through this, both of my kids will be jumping on Khan Academy and doing their pre-algebra sessions. They have a full curriculum, all for free. If you've never checked out Khan Academy, check it out today. I will have a link below. This is not sponsored. Um, I just really enjoyed them and the resources that they have. So once we go through all of this and we have found the things that uh, needed some extra practice and we've practiced those, then we will move on to the pre-algebra from Khan Academy. All right, so then into English language arts. So we've got yeah. our big fat, everything you need to ace English language arts in one big fat notebook. This is again, our core. And then we've got some extra stuff here. Um, if I come across something in here that we have never covered or that needs some extra practice and we don't have it already in these other workbooks, then I will go online and I will find some stuff probably from Khan Academy. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time doing poetry again. Um, I'm hoping to do once a month poetry tea time. Uh, last year and the year before, I tried to do it um, once a week. It, that's just not going to work for us this year. So I'm going to try to do poetry tea time probably once a month. Um, and so we're going to keep going with some of these poems here. And then I'm hoping to get... Um, the newest book that's out from this one. I forget what it's called, um, but we're going to do some of those poems and then just some poems that we find online. Um, we have got to do some spelling. All right, so we will be using sequential spelling, level one. Now we are not starting this completely over. We did this two years ago and then last year, I'll be honest, we kind of missed it and didn't do any spelling. Not sure what happened, but we just didn't. So we are already halfway, about halfway through level one. So we're going to continue that. And then I do have level two and level three ready to go, you know, in case we actually get through all of it. But our goal is we're definitely going to get through level, the rest of level one and then hopefully at least part of level two. So we've got that. Then I've got this writing detectives from the critical thinking company. This is level one. This is best for grades three through six. We have not focused very much on structured writing. Um, we've been encouraging a lot of write what you feel like because uh, getting creative plus structured can be kind of hard when kids are younger. Now that my kids are getting a little bit older, we're going to do a little bit more um, structured writing. This one is all about investigative, investigative reporting. So we're going to do at least half of this book. I'm not expecting to do all of it. We're going to do that together for both the kids. Then we're going to continue with our writing strands beginning one. This is from Master Books as well. Um, we got about halfway through this one last year 
And so we're going to continue this. I do like this program, but because we do a couple different styles, um, we just don't get through it as quickly as other people. So uh, we're going to finish up those. So about half of those is left. Then we're going to do Worldly Wise 3000. We are actually more than halfway done with this book, which is book three. And then we're probably going to move into book four. And then we have Word Roots Beginning. Again, this one, we are about halfway, a little bit less than halfway on this one. This one is also from Critical Thinking Company. Um, and this is Learning the Building Blocks of Better Spelling of Vocabulary. So we're going to finish these. And I haven't decided yet if we're going to move on into book the next book or not. We're just going to see how this goes and how long it takes us to get through those. Next, we have our sentence di diagramming, again, from the Critical Thinking Company. This here is something that they started, I want to say, two years ago. So it's kind of newer for them. Uh, this is the beginning book. I also have the level one book. Um, and these are all for grades three through 12. Um, so definitely, if you're doing this with your children, start at the beginning. It just... It's just a lot easier that way. So we did do uh, about half of this last year. So we're going to continue finishing that up. And then I just have a couple random things. So um, this one is a book about adjectives. So we'll just read that. It's got a fun book. Um, and then I have this painless grammar book here. Um, just to help us with some grammar stuff that we maybe have missed. Or... Um, some things that we need extra reminders in. We've got that as well as punctuation power. And then we're going to do some classics. Okay, so growing up, I did not ever really like reading classic books. Honestly, I didn't like reading at all um, until I was probably about 15. I didn't like reading. So reading the classics was even worse. Well, this, we've never really done a lot of the classics in our homeschool. So this year I decided as part of ours, we're going to do a little bit of a classic. So we're going to be reading the Moby Dick. And this is a kid's illustrated version. It's not really for kids. It's like still for, it's the um, great classics for children. So it's definitely still a chapter book, but it's got some pictures in it too. So Moby Dick and then the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And then we're also going to read this Who Was Jane Austen book. Um, yeah, I really love, if you've never seen these Who Was books, they have Who Was, What Was, Where Is, and I think there's one other. Um, but these books are awesome. They're chapter books, but they have lots of black and white photos in them and just the perfect overview for that. So that is our English language arts. Then we have science. Okay, so once again, everything you need to ace science in one big fat notebook. Okay, so this is our core. And then as we're going through our core, as we get to different things that we're covering, we're going to go over into these books and pull out different things to do that are related to what we've studied in here because this does not have a workbook with it and it's not a workbook. Um, so we're going to use this and then pull from these books, which I've had for a while. Um, this one is Science Detective Beginning. Um, this one we have never actually done. I've had it for a few years and we just kept on putting off. So, But there's a lot of good pages in here that we're going to do along with what we're studying in here. And then we have are exploring the building blocks of science. This is book five. I have the laboratory notebook and the student textbook. Um, we're not using this as a full curriculum, but as we go through, like I said, this we'll pull from here and there's a lot of extra stuff here. And then I couldn't put all the science books up here that we're going to look through, but I will show you. I have a lot of different science resource books, encyclopedias, everything that they can use. 
All these down here are extra history books and science books and encyclopedias. Um, yeah, they'll be they'll have plenty of resources. Plus, there's online resources that they can look through. All right, so the next section is our read alouds. So we started reading the Imagination Station uh, book series, and then we lost this book and didn't find it again. And so once I found it, now it's going to go back on our list. These are really fun, real, uh, really fun things for read alouds. I just have the first three here, as well as the first three of the Littles um, series. This was recommended to me as something to maybe get my son to read more but i think it's going to be a fun read aloud instead so we've got that those are the only read alouds i am planning at this point because they are do they are doing so many other reading projects that that's probably going to be plenty all right so then next we have our critical thinking section so we're going to keep working on our uh, skill sharpeners critical thinking book which is from Evan Moore. I did a review of this book and I will link it down below for you. Um, we are about a quarter of the way through this book. We've just been doing them randomly but um, we're going to do at least one to two of these a week for this school year. And then we have the Thinking Toolbox which has 35 lessons that will build your reasoning skills. I think reasoning skills is something that kids really <laughs> need these days. Um, something that tends to be lacking. So I figured this is a good age to get them started on this. I don't think we're going to do all 35 lessons this year, but my goal is to get through about half of this book. Then we have a few what I'm gonna call unit studies they're not true unit studies but they're you'll see so a couple years ago my kids participated in rad kids um, which if you've never heard of rad kids I will try to have a link below um, it is a safety personal empowerment safety education thing we do not have this available in our current area but I still have this book that they gave for the parents for when the parents want to do some review with them. So we're going to go ahead and take some time probably in the middle of the school year and go through and review what they learned during that. And then we have these Yellowstone Junior Ranger books. These are actually really uh, comprehensive comprehensive books we've done a couple of the pages while we were at Yellowstone and then the rest I'm going to have them do as we go through this school year because there's a lot of like research and looking things up that's going to go into that and then we also have the junior missile year program um, a couple years ago we went to the Titan Missile Museum in Arizona and got to uh, take a uh, trip seeing that and so we're going to go ahead and finish up our junior missile year program now the last thing in here is german okay so we have the usborne everyday words sticker book in german um they've done a part of this already but not all of it and that's fine we are this year as a family learning German. Um, so there will be some other resources added to here, but this is one of the fun resources we'll be using. I'm not quite sure what program we're gonna use. My husband is kind of in charge of all that and that's why this is kind of empty because you know he's been working, not really having a chance to figure that out yet, but we are going to hop on that and try to learn some German. All right. On this next shelf here, we have our history. So as you see, we have first world history and American history. And there is a reason why it is set up like that. It is because we are going to start with world history and will not jump into the American history until we hit that point in the world history. Once we hit that point in the world history, then we will do them both together. 
um, kind of like the same years, what's happening in the rest of the world and what's happening in America. Um, so these are, again, our core. Now my kids have had a lot of time doing, um, they know a lot about history stuff. They actually have some really cool YouTube videos that they watch all about world history and American history. And we're going to use those as we go through this to kind of fill in and give more details about certain time periods. Um, but then we have some other resources, like a lot of reading. Okay, so my son's, one of his favorite time periods is the Revolutionary War. So I'm going to, once we get to that point in here, then I'm going to pull this out and we're going to take a little extra time to focus on that. Um, I also have in here just a little extra thing, military machines, just something fun for him. We're going to cover briefly with my son, but more with my daughter, um, politics and government. Um, just giving a better understanding of how these things work, at least how they work in America. And then here is one of the readers that um, we will probably actually do this one as a read aloud as well because I want them both to go through this one. So this is Meet Thomas Jefferson. It's a chapter book. Um, through history, there are two time periods that there are three time periods that we're going to have a focus on. So one is, of course, the Revolutionary War. I'm going to do a unit that'll last a couple weeks on that. But then we're also going to, around Thanksgiving, spend a bunch of time talking about the Native Americans um, and everything that involves that, such as so talking about the early starts of American history and the Native culture is going to be something that we're going to spend a decent amount of time around Thanksgiving. And then I have this bucket. Okay, this bucket is going to be filled even more uh, soon. I am looking for resources. If you have any extras, please let me know of good ones. Um, the last time period that we're going to have a big focus on has to do with slavery in America. Um, that's, this is something that we've just briefly covered with our children, but now that our children are getting older and are understanding more, this is a good time, I feel, to go in depth on it and help them really understand how it was and um, how there are still ways that we can improve today. So I've been piecing together a lot of resources for that, and I'm just going to pull this down and show you. Okay, so um, I'll, they're all books. So some of the books we'll do together. Some of the books they'll do on their own. Um, if you have any uh, good movies, good uh, documentaries, good... Um, really anything related to slavery in America, please let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate the help in finding accurate but appropriate stuff. Now, I will be having my kids watch a few video, a few movies that I've seen that do have some nudity in them. And the reason why I'm okay with that is because it is accurate is very accurate to the time and what was happening then and it's not sexualized so uh the resources that i already help have is the help now i know that this is a made up it's a novel um but this was really one of my is one of my favorite books and um i really think that my daughter especially will be able to connect and understand things better through reading this book so she's for sure going to read this I haven't decided if my son is he might not be quite ready for that um we're going to be reading Abraham's Battle a novel of Gettysburg Mississippi Bridge um, we're going to read about the freedom train the story of Harriet Tubman Tum Tubman um there are so many different chapter books and stories about her um, but this one is 
written in a way that I find it easier for my son to understand. It'll be, my daughter can definitely read a better one, but we're probably just going to have them both read that. Now, I do also have this leveled reader. This is a level two. My kids can definitely read this, but this is about Ruby Bridges goes to school. Then we have the What Was the Underground Railroad. This is like one of my favorite, was one of my favorite things to learn about. Just the amazing bravery that went on to make this happen and to keep it going. So I'm excited to share that with my kids. No, it was not an exciting time, but seeing the brave stories come out from times that are not exciting. Um, and then what was the March on Washington? Then I have two of the I Survived books. I have the Battle of Gettysburg, 1863, and the American Revolution, 1776. So like I said, we have a lot of books. If there is another book or two that you know of that are must-reads, let me know so I can add them. But if you have any movies or documentaries or even just simple YouTube videos that are very good and appropriate, um, please let me know in the comments because I would love those extra resources. All right, moving on, we have our <laughs> current affairs. Okay, this is not something that I was planning on doing, but if you've been watching anything on the news or reading news reports, Area 51, I guess, is going to be stormed is what the rumor is here in September sometime soon. I believe it's like September 21st, I want to say. I don't know for sure. But um, I saw Where is Area 51 at Target, and I love these books, and I thought this would be a perfect thing to go in with what's actually happening in the world today. Um, next up is our section of Bible or character training is what I'm going to call it. Okay, so I have over here, I have the Bible Force First Heroes Bible. It's a graphic novel Bible. I have the Heroes Tales books. This first one, we've read through almost all of them. So we're just going to finish those and then move into book two. I think there's a book three, but I have to look online because I'm not sure. Um, and then I have the Coming Home book from Max Licato. And then I have Heaven is for Real for kids. Now, my kids are definitely older than what this is. But um, we're going to read through this one more time. And then we're going to move into the Heaven is for Real for Teens book. Um, yeah. So there's that. And then we have finances. All right. So a couple years ago, we started doing the financial financial peeves junior and we're just going to redo it and continue it because we didn't finish it but so we're going to start all over and then I have here the total money makeover this is mostly for me but I have it here because I know that there are stuff in here that's kind of on the kiddish very kiddish side of that maybe I can give my daughter some better information there Okay, so down here, we just have the readers that they're going to be assigned. Um, a lot of the Diary of an 8-Bit Warrior, Diary of a Minecraft Zombie, Wheel Nuts, a How to Eat Fried Worms. We've got Shades of Glory. We've got Abraham Lincoln. A bunch of, like, history ones. We've got some. Okay, so that is our curriculum that we're going to be using for my children this year. Um, I just wanted to say that we are also going to be using some of the Khan Academy resources and also some YouTube videos from some different channels that my kids already watch. I will link them below so that if you decide that you want to have some extra resources in there, you can. But I will say to please preview them before your children so you know what type of style they are. Um, I do allow my children to watch things that are a little bit more on the older side of things. So, for example, I know one of them, they're very thorough and everything, but they do use language um, in a funny way. As For adults, it's kind of funny. For children, it is 
borderline like okay is this really necessary um so definitely review a couple of the videos to kind of understand the style that these videos are before you allow your children to see them um and i just very quickly want to give you a look at how these books are laid out okay so these books are actually by um the same people who do brain quest so i really like them i wish that they kind of had more of a workbook style like brain quest ones but that's okay that's all right so even though they all have different topics they all are laid out the exact same style okay so they have like introduction page then their contents page lets you know how that's broken up so like this one is american history so the first unit is prehistoric prehistory and early 1600s and then it has chapters within that time frame and then it has the second unit is um colonial america and then we have american revolution and the early republic and then we have american expansion silver war and reconstruction and then it just continues like that all the way until <laughs> like what it says current ish events um, I believe these books all stop like 2008, so definitely not current, current, but um, pretty current. Um, and so then it just goes right into the different sections. So each unit has a little bit of an overview. So it has the unit one. It's in this like this really cool like notebook thing. It's supposed to be like a um, a kid who took notes but it's definitely uh written by people who know what they're talking about <laughs> um so it just has a little synopsis of what you're going to cover in that unit and then it goes right into the chapters in the unit so there's at least two sometimes up to i think like six chapters in each unit and it's just it's laid out super fun super nice um lots of colors but yet lots of information and it's gonna give you a good amount of information on each of those sections it's going to have maps in it which i love it's going to have maps from that time and then as you go on the maps will change um it's going to have different words so as it comes across a bigger word um like societies it'll have the definition over here super cool um and then at the end of each chapter it's going to have a check your knowledge spot and it's going to have questions. So the least questions that I believe I've seen is five questions. And the most I believe was 12. Um, but like here, it literally asks the questions. Like this one's a two-part question. This one's also a two-part question. Um, so it has a lot of questions about facts, but also about opinions. Um, not as many opinion-based ones, but a lot of facts ones. And then the very next page has the answers and the ones that are opinion answers. It um, will have like an extra little thing on it that says that this might not be the exact answer you gave type of thing. Um, but this is like the most common opinion out there. And then it just goes straight into your next chapter. So as we go through a certain chapter, that's when we're going to say, okay, do we need to know more about this time period? Then instead of going to the next chapter, we're going to go into our other resources about that. And then that's just how it continues all the way until the end where after the last chapter of Check Your Answers, it has an amazing index full of <laughs> pretty much every word. Like this index page... This index starts on page 503 and ends on 518. So definitely a thorough index. And the paper is different from a normal book paper, but it's really good quality. So that is just a quick overview, a look through of this. I will, if you guys want me to, give you a more thorough view of every single one of these books. Um, if you're looking to buy these for to use in your homeschool, your day-to-day -day life, whatever, 
I will link the Amazon link below. I am an Amazon affiliate, which just means that if you buy it through clicking on my link, I get a small, small percentage of what your total cost was. Um, but the cost is still the same for you. And I will say that it is on average, the Amazon ones are about the same price as the Target ones, but they almost always have them on sale. So like, for example, I already had, I had bought the math and the English ones at Target for $12.95, I think, or $14.95. I bought the science one at Barnes & Noble, and that one I want to say I, I paid closer to $24. Um, but then I just ordered the World History and American History on Amazon uh, last week, actually. And both of them were on sale. One of them was on sale for $9, and the other one was on sale for like $10.50. So definitely cheaper on Amazon, and I looked at the others, and... I believe two of the others were on sale for nine and the other one was 1050. So definitely check out the Amazon link first, see if it's a better price. And I mean, if not, get it at Target. I don't care. It's not going to hurt me. It helps me if you click and you buy it through my link, but it doesn't hurt me if you don't. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see how I'm planning out our school year, how I am, how our school year goes, make sure you are subscribed hit that red button down below so you don't miss anything that comes out because i do have quite a few videos coming up including including my once i give you a view of this homeschool room and my homeschool spaces i will have a giveaway and it's a good one at least i think so i'm excited for it i've been actually saving up some stuff for quite a while so I'm excited for it so be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it so give me a thumbs up and I hope this was helpful and I will talk to y'all later